of the state um, you wrote there um, more easily. Okay, <coughs> since the, the number of write cycles is limited on, uh, on any given flash, let's say disk, um, what the manufacturers use is a mechanism that's called bare leveling. Um, they put in like 10% or 20% or, or in so-called industrial grade flash even 100% of the listed storage onto the device so that you have first redundant blocks as you have on, on your normal hard disk. So if your hard disk um, has uh, failed blocks, then uh, the hard disk logic will automatically map out uh, to redundant blocks on the hard disk and you will never notice until all the redundant blocks are eaten up. So in flash, um, this is also being done. Typical values are 8% for the cheaper, uh, cheaper flash memories and um, then going up from there for more expensive stuff. So, but that's the relatively simple thing. So what can happen to you is your, for, for whatever reason, your key is stored on flash, you want to overwrite it, and of course your flash memory will say, oh, I have happily overwritten it, but in, in practice, um, the key is still in the redundant blocks. This can also do you, happen to you with hard disk, by the way. So if, if people doing hard disk forensics, uh, what they always do is uh, looking into re uh, redundant blocks to see if there's interesting information left there that could not be erased by the user anymore. So b basically, the idea is um, like in um, newer file systems that um, have copy on write, you, um, you, s you store uh, your secret and um, think, um, oops, I need to overwrite it. I mean, you use uh, tools like uh, SRM or um, whatever, and um, it uh, writes uh, well three times crypto to the device, and one, one times uh, zeros, um, so you have, um, you, you're left with uh, five blocks, one with your um, clear text, um, three um, times um, your secret, and um, one block zero on the, um, on the flash. And then this um, copy on write is uh, fine for, for rollbacking, um, but it's um, also fine for rollbacking if you don't really intend it to do. Uh, yeah, you can basically uh, roll back into the redundant, redundant blocks, yeah. And um, on top of that, um, the wear leveling mechanisms are something that um, the manufacturers of flash systems, uh, that's basically most of the intellectual property except for manufacturing these flash uh, modules is in the wear leveling mechanisms. Uh, wear leveling means um, there's a logic in front of the, the real physical flash memory that sits in the flash controller that tries to level the load of write cycles over all the blocks in the flash memory. So basically it, it keeps a count on how many cycles have been written onto each block in the flash memory and tries to make sure that each new write cycle goes onto the block that has the lowest uh, write cycle count. So thereby maximizing the number of uh, write cycles that can be done before the, the disk uh, has to be declared uh, broken. So these, these mechanisms are very rarely published, so there are, is, is very little documentation on how these mechanisms really work. Um, there are some, some papers on them before the scientists are getting bought by SunDisk or whoever is uh, currently making this stuff. And um, th there are a number of techniques. Uh, for instance, one, th one of them is called um, uh, looking for hot and cold data, meaning looking for files that get frequently rewritten um, and these are then more aggressively spread over, uh, over memory blocks um, than so-called cold data that can be stored onto memory blocks that have already a high write count. So to, to in order to maximize these, uh, the, uh, the number of write cycles that can be uh, gotten from the whole disk. So what it, but what it means is um, this flash controller is simulating to you something that looks like a hard disk. So there are even flash controllers now on the market for mobile phones that give you an FAT. So you basically have an FAT API into a chip. So it basically you have a very thin driver layer in the operating system that uh, speaks FAT to you and that is just an API translator to the chip. And everything that's happening in the flash chip is more or less a black box because there is no documentation on how to get in there. And there's also no raw mode. Uh, because they they uh, they want to keep it really secret how they do their wear leveling and what they really do in the inside the flash disk. One of the reasons for um, uh, for these um, yeah. uh, one of the reasons for um, for this kind of behavior is that 
Um, a lot of these manufacturers, for instance, um, M Systems is one of the larger, uh, larger ones that has, has been recently bought by SanDisk. Um, what they do is they buy flash chips from whoever sells them cheapest on the market. It could be LG, it could be Samsung, it could be Toshiba, it could be some company in China that we never have heard of. And they repackage these things into so-called flash modules that are ready to use for, uh, for mobile phone manufacturers. And uh, they then put in the, the flash controller that speaks correctly to the chips and speaks correctly to the mobile phone side, and, but you never know what, what is really, really happening in there. And uh, so they, they can buy whatever is cheapest and sell their customer consistent product by just changing the software and the controller. So, which means um, flash forensics is currently uh, something like a dark art because what you need to do is to, you need to reverse engineer the flash controller. You need to find out what's happening in the flash controller in order to make sense of what the raw memory dump of the flash holds. So if people get a in, in mobile phone into, into the forensics lab um, and they want to look for stuff that is still laying around, uh, basically stuff that has not been erased by the wear leveling, um, then they, uh, uh, they look if they have the controller in the library and know how this controller works or ask a bit around if somebody else in the community has this controller. And if not, then they need to sit down and reverse engineer the controller. And there are plenty of. So uh, the uh, one forensics uh, guy that I talked with uh, had uh, 26 different, really different types of flash controllers uh, that he knew of that are being used in current products uh, with different wear leveling strategies, different means of uh, talking to the flash, uh, flash ship and so on. Um, so this is basically good news. So the good news is that getting the data that has been left by wear leveling and the redundant blocks um, is relatively difficult. So if you cannot use for forensics the, the file system abstraction because you want to dig deeper, not just see the files that have been left around by, uh, by, by FAT, um, then you need to know the, the, uh, the, uh, the flash controller. But uh, given the amount of effort that can be spent by certain, certain interested parties, uh, this will not hold. So there, people are really sitting down doing this reverse engineering. Um, Still, I wanted to um, yeah, well, um, explain one of um, those alg algorithms, the hot cold algorithm Frank talked about, um, has an um, interesting property of um, uh, if it uh, sees that uh, one block is uh, being used, um, not being um, written to for a long time, it um, copies the data from that block to another block which is, um, has been um, more frequently written to and um, thus uh, reuse um, the, the lesser written to um, or fewer times written to um, block to um, this, um, okay. on, on that way, you get copies um, of your data um, that uh, you, you didn't even um, know about. Um, parts of your um, file system are being copied without um, uh, you ever requesting um, that that very file. So, and when you um, <coughs> well, when you know that um, there is a FAT file system on um, on an SD card, um, there is an important um, property of um, FAT. This is um, delete. Um, like you know from your old Windows days, um, just overrides the first um, character in the file name. And the same thing happens on a digital camera. So if you think um, after borrowing um, um, an SD card from a friend, um, if you think um, erasing your um, SD card uh, by your camera, um, well, really erases it, well, there is um, tools around. For example, um, Photo Rescue, the program the EDA guys um, write to make real money. Um, to that help you find um, impor important stuff, um, PDFs or JPEGs if it's uh, accidentally lost. But um, well, if um, I borrow um, an SD card and um, my friend um, is interested in what um, kind of pictures I, I might have taken, um, he can um, well, use the properties of the FAT file system to um, reassemble the, the pictures. Yeah, and th the same then applies to flash memory on a lower level, only even worse. Um, so, uh, if you look ahead, what um, what will come around um, within the next 12 to 18 months? Um, mobile devices will change. So, rebooting a device is something that will not be as pronounced as it is today. So, instant on, meaning you just open the device and can work, uh, is a property that is highly desired by most users. So, it, they don't want to wait. Um, so this can be either done by Hibernate or even by executing from flash um, or having uh, memory deep frozen. 
uh, by, by certain techniques. Or, but uh, what that means is that um, the operating system is getting a more and more abstract view on the hardware that is below. So a normal uh, flash hard disk that you can buy today is looking to the operating system like a hard disk, uh, but it isn't. And uh, in, uh, in other words, the, uh, the operating system of today uh, has no security properties that can help us in the memory world of tomorrow. So people are moving more and more um, of their life to mobile devices, so there, there will be extremely thin and light devices that basically can do all your work except a heavy C uh, CPU load. And uh, the companies that are doing the, the memory modules are, of course, preparing for that. Uh, one thing that um, uh, is apparently coming up is a mode in the flash module that also holds the RAM in a mobile device that uh, suspends automatically in hardware without the operating system doing anything um, the whole contents of the RAM into the flash. So it's just one, one pin that says sleep and you, uh, the RAM is written to the flash and powered off and if you power on the process is reversed. It's happening inside the chip. And that includes kernel memory as well? That includes all of the memory. So what, what happens is basically all your memory is being dumped on Hibernate onto a flash system where you have no real way of knowing of erasing stuff in there. So that is what is basically happening. So you, at any time when your device is powered on or you, um, you know, to put it to sleep or whatever, uh, you can essentially uh, not know what is happening with the memory. Um, so the, that means that um, the control over what is happening with memory is shrinking, except if the operating system is beginning to cope with that. So what is required, essentially, on a strategic level is that the operating system needs a go-to-sleep procedure that uh, includes doing everything to make sure that no keys are lying around. So basically, we need, a, need an operating system-wide notify procedure when the device is going to sleep so that the, uh, everything can be cleaned up from memory before the memory is being stored into flash. So and that is currently not available. So I hope somebody will sit down and write that. Uh, but that's one of the, the most important things um, uh, for the next 12 months to build that into the, into the major operating systems. Um, Vista, for instance, has this um, uh, s uh, suspend to flash on their um, uh, hard disks that have flash uh, built in, and they have done some stuff on that, but I'm not sure if that really will, will hold up uh, against look really looking deeply into the flash in there. Um, so, in other words, at the moment, security will cost you more battery, so because you're not using these uh, really deep hibernate, but you're only using suspend and trying to uh, not leave your memory uh, stuttering around your, uh, your, your uh, long-term storage. Um, yeah. But also um, uh, swapping, uh, flipping your bits in, um, in memory costs yeah. um, battery time and um, you um, are erasing um, the memory um, you've been using after, well, saying that free has to erase memory, so you have to um, all do it by yourself and um, you have to watch for yourself and the kernel will not do it. But well, <coughs> there um, is way. There is ways um, to um, pre prevent your um, secrets from leaking. Well, that's um, using um, mlock in your application, um, encrypt your spell. You can, um, as I've told, um, flip your flip the bits in memory. Um, you have to be aware that um, any mass storage device you're talking to um, today will will mean flash in one or the other way. Um, so you have to consider that um, every um, data you store into mass storage um, needs to be encrypted. So there's no way around. If you accidentally write um, some secrets um, you better don't want to leak um, to, to a flash device, you can, well, you can flood and pray. You can write um, well, gigabytes of data and hope that um, you um, finally hit um, um, the last block. So, which is, by the way, the, the currently recommended method of uh, erasing the SD card that uh, you have borrowed from your friend, uh, which is um, basically overwriting the SD card with a uh, file that is larger or as large as the storage space on the SD card multiple times. 
um, so thereby hoping that you hit most of the stuff that uh, you did on that SD card. So um, currently there's no no other 